Welcome to People's Voice, where real stories meet raw emotions. Dive into the world of relationships and human experiences. Today, let's explore together. I shouldn't have read my husband's journals. I, 35 female, have been married to my husband, 46 male, let's call him Richard, for the past year, together for three. His first wife, let's call her and, unfortunately passed away from terminal illness, leaving behind him and their two kids. We pretty much had a normal relationship, or that's what I had thought. I was cleaning his late wife's study room, since I had to move some of our clothes to her wardrobe, which we don't really use anymore. I saw a dusty box full of journals, and thought that these might have been written by Anne, since she was fond of writing stories herself. However, these were written by Richard, which compelled me to read each of them. Honestly, I shouldn't have. These journals had details of our relationship, and how he got into a relationship with me just because his family, especially his kids, loved me, and how he doesn't want any companionship after Anne had passed away. I was his mother's doctor, and we basically got introduced through her. He mentions proposing to me because his best friend questioned him on the future of our relationship. Every time he kissed me, it reminded him of Anne and how painful it was for him. I remember him asking me to marry him while having dinner with the kids one day. It was so thoughtless and random. At that moment, I was ecstatic. What a moron I am. It's been four days since I've read those, and I just don't have anybody to share my feelings with. I considered Richard my best friend, but now, looking back at it, I just realize it was all fake. All our hugs, the times we kissed, the times we held hands, and every time he said he loves me looking into my eyes. Last night, he brought a blueberry cheesecake, which is my favorite. He says, we haven't spoken in over three days, and suggested we go for a walk, which I denied, saying I'm tired. It's true. I've been leaving for work early and going to bed even before he comes back, just to avoid talking to him. He crawled behind my back at night in the bed and whispered, I love you. I wept quietly. How is it even possible to keep a facade for this long? First update, I wasn't really feeling well this morning. This morning, I wasn't really feeling well, and before I could head for work, Richard got hold of me and asked me why I was behaving so weird. I told him that I've read his journals. He wasn't agitated, but disheartened that I read them. He said he intended to destroy them and never let me read those, but we've had a busy year, so he kind of forgot. I told him that, if he didn't love me, why did he ask me for marriage? He told me that, it's true that he only felt platonic love for me because, he couldn't get himself to love another woman except N. He says, I'm his best friend in this whole world, and nothing would change that. He said, he loves me very dearly, but it's different from how he loved N. He believes marriage is not just built on love but there are other parameters like trust and loyalty. He just fell on his knees and told me not to end this marriage, and honestly, I wouldn't have. I love him way too much to do that. He said he's ready to work on our marriage and suggested we go to therapy together whenever I have calmed down a bit. He's gone to get us something to eat as I type this. Something doesn't feel right. It's so conflicting, I don't know. Second update, a med conference decision. There's a medical conference coming up in a few days, and I've decided to sign up for that. It will take me away for at least a week from this chaos. Richard doesn't want me to go. He's begging me to stay home with him to talk through this, because he thinks I won't come back. I think, if we go no contact for some time, it will help us understand what we actually want. I've also been trying to make him understand that, if he doesn't love me, then it's unfair for him as well to be stuck with me forever. Maybe he could find someone better with whom he'll actually fall in love. He insists and swears on his children that he does love me, but it's different. 
This man tries so hard to be the ideal family guy that he overlooks his own happiness sometimes. I'm willing to work through the marriage in all honesty, but how do you even start? Final update, a long night and revelations. Richard and I didn't sleep last night. I demanded, he tell me why he decided to play such a long game with me. I've never yelled so much in my entire life at someone, let alone my husband. After hours of bawling and begging, he finally revealed what had been going on in his mind. It turns out Anne's elder sister, we'll call her Mary, said a few things to him when he and I got together. She expressed her discontent over the fact that I was all over him and their extended families. How Anne's kids called me mom, even before we got married. She also said her own family behaves as if Anne never existed. I have good relations with Richard's previous in-laws. I've been welcomed by them with open hearts, which I'm forever grateful for. Part of it is because I lost my own parents when I was seven hence, I always cherish such moments. But that didn't mean I stepped over her memories, at least I never felt I did. Richard said, her words made him realize that he didn't think of and that often after we got together and felt immense guilt over the fact she was basically getting lost into oblivion. He said, he never wanted to stop loving her, and if that meant playing along, he would have easily done it his whole life. Of course, I didn't believe him at first, but he has shown me some letters that Mary has addressed to him, and it did seem like she doesn't like me. I didn't complain much. He has decided to go for individual therapy alongside marriage counseling, which I'm happy for. I've judged him way too much in the past five days, I can't believe so much was going on inside his head. I've apologized for reading his journals, and he told me he didn't mind at all. I don't know if I want to talk to Mary because what would I even talk about? I have no idea why she hates me. My priority is my own family, and I want to comfort Richard as much as I can. We haven't spoken to anyone about this whole fiasco and have collectively decided to keep it among ourselves because outsiders may not understand the full dynamics of our relationship. This possibly is my last update. I appreciate each and everyone for their suggestions and concerns. I really had nowhere to vent, but putting it out here helped me. Public Reaction Spring Any 5810 says I'm really sorry for the hurt you're experiencing. In my personal experience, my journals are where I write out how I'm feeling when my emotions are at their peak, when I'm at my absolute lowest, when all I can think are horrible thoughts, I write them down. Even if they're not entirely true, if that's what I'm feeling at the moment, I need to let it out into my journals instead of letting it seep into conversation in real life. Have you considered perhaps the journals were a therapy for him to get through his grief? Or perhaps he feels like he is writing to his late wife, and these would be the things she needs to hear? Just some things to think about. But most of all, I think that you should communicate with him. It might be hard, but it sounds like he does actually love you, and I think that it would be worth a conversation at least before making any rash decisions. Best of luck to you, and know that you are worthy and you are loved. Idol Igloo says, I understand that people can write things they're working through in their journals that can be interpreted in many ways, but he said now, present day that it's true and he doesn't feel romantic love for OP. It's not something he's working through, it is reality. I think it's unhealthy to encourage her to rug sweep this. She should get individual therapy and figure out what she needs to be happy. Most I know would not be happy being duped into a marriage like this, always knowing you weren't the one or even romantically loved for so long. MN Girl Inc. says, Right, and just seven months ago. It's not like it's grown into a more romantic love. He still feels platonic love for her. OP, I'm not saying to divorce either, but you definitely shouldn't settle for someone who just needed a mom for his kids and some companionship. He needs to let you know if this is a romantic love or if it's still platonic, and if platonic, that's not fair to you. Querulous Panda says, Not gonna lie. The thought of having a journal that had every deep, dark, irrational, and inaccurate thought I've ever had written down, available in a place where someone could find it and read it without any kind of context, would give me such ridiculous anxiety I can't even imagine. 
I've never understood why people think journal writing is such a good idea given the utter landmine it turns out to be for so many of them. Especially kids, telling kids to write a secret journal with all their thoughts into it and then expecting the parents to never look at it? That's crazy, there are so many rational and irrational reasons why a parent would justify looking at them. That's not even taking into account malicious siblings, friends, etc. It's like, hey, let's create a weakness that can be exploited, it'll be great. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.